Uno, dos. Sonreí, Javier. Tres. Hello, I am Juan Antonio Bayona and I am director and writer of La Sociedad de la Nieve. The plane crash scene is a pivotal moment in the film. Their lives change forever. We had long interviews with the survivors. Each of them had a different memory of what happened. And basically the idea was to do something very immersive. Es buena. There is a very interesting change of light in that sense that somehow marks the change of the tone of the scene when they get into the cloud. Right, Pedro? Yeah, exactly, because at the beginning um, of the scene, we see them like having fun. And as the mechanic Roque explains them how to cross the Andes, the light goes darker and bluer, and that's when it, it gets serious. Technically, this was a very complex uh, scene to shoot. All the forces, all the physical forces that are exerted on our characters are real. We had a fuselage mounted on a gimbal, and a long one, you know, that moved a little bit, and then we had another gimbal that was like moving really, really extremely. There is an escalation in the scene. We start in the sun and then we get into the cloud. And then we, at the very end, we are able to go over the cloud again. And then we have this blinding light, which is very symbolic for the character of Numa. I had this idea of finishing the escalation with the sunlight. This is the first scene I start working on. I was inspired with the light and of the photography. We got this idea of of using the sound of the engines because Bayona was telling me that we're not going to use music. One of the biggest challenges that I find with scoring films is um, not just where to put music, but where not to have music. When you leave space for people, it allows them to truly feel something that you really need for a scene like this. The scene has to be dramatic as well, so I realized that I had to find the sound of the engine of this F-37. And it was something difficult to find because they are not working anymore, so we have to do like research and find a twin turbo Rolls-Royce engine, has an engine like that to re-record that. So I thought when, when the light of the sun burns the screen, the sound is like so high that kind of like became silence. That's the moment that we create a silence, and in that silence, we do something very interesting, which is this explosion. We talked to the survivors. The worst part of the accident was not the crash against the mountain, but once they slide through the snow, it's the crash against the snow, and it's how all the seats like were pushed towards the cockpit. We call it the accordion. Uh, and actually it was the more challenging part because that had to be designed shot by shot and mixing a lot of techniques. Yeah, it was super difficult to visualize like which effects we had to do and what was a dummy and what was a CGI. The knees, the everything breaking and the face of Eugenia and this and that. And I was really, really, Happy, well, happy for the work that we did, that everything that we did, it's on the screen. 
We shot all the backgrounds for real, so there is no CGI. I was shooting myself those plates on a helicopter. We were at 13,000 feet. The wind was terrible that day. And I remember that we had to cross the spot where the plane crashed 14 times. It's based on, on real photography. And we make uh, hundreds and thousands of photography in order to create all the backgrounds. We had more shots from the outside of the plane, but the more we were inside the fuselage, the more effective the scene was. Uh, actually, to stay with the characters, which is basically one I, general idea for the film, like to be very close from the characters, to stay with them uh, all the time. The more we were into the plane with them, not knowing what was going on, the, the better. Oh, so the avalanche happened, I think it was the day 16. I should say that shooting this scene was probably um, one of the most challenging things I've ever done in my life because the set was so limited. The space that they end up having after the avalanche hits, it's like, you know, four feet high by probably 10, 12 feet long. So it's like a place that's really small. Get ah, no, 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 no. ah. In that space, we had to put 19 actors, eight corpses, and two camera crews. A lot of these shots, the ceiling is digital because uh, there was no other way to see the scene. We use fake bags, so they were like made of rubber, so it was safe for the actors. I rehearsed the scene a couple of times, so every, everybody knew exactly where to be, what not to do in order to be safe. But again, the, the same way we did the plane crash, very immersive. This is the, we had the same concept in here. No! It was the most demanding scene for the actors. Probably this is the worst moment for the actors because they, they had to be under this kind of like wood platform. They had to be underneath in the dark. They had a layer of snow of like 20 centimeters. And we did very long takes in order to keep the energy flowing all the time. I really hate when you cut the scene and you need to reestablish the energy in between takes. So we bet for going for very long takes. Oh, and actually one of the challenges, and I think one of the things that I'm most proud of, is that you, you can barely see anything. You don't see actually the avalanche. It's uh, all the time inside the plane. And uh, it's all about sound. Yeah. Now that you mentioned, uh, um, there's like this this trick about the avalanche is coming for the first time. Like everybody's just clapping and banging the fuselage. So we, we mix the sound of the avalanche coming, the vibrating sounds of the metal that we use also on the accident and the plane crash scene. It's kind of like echo of that sound. So something danger again is happening. So it's this kind of sounds that we listen on the first scene. The sounds are muted. Actually, if it was like some friction against the microphones. We bury microphones under the snow. We also record him like muffled and then we get out. So we decide to have like, this realistic kind of like documentary sounds and each shot has a different sound. One shot is like more in silence so you can, you can hear more the scream. In next shot, you hear more the wind. You hear different kind of like lower frequencies, higher frequencies. So we have this dynamic range to make like the rhythm and less aggressive somehow. Remember that there was a whole choreography where they had to come out to the surface. They had a number and we were like saying, number one, number two, number three. And as, as they are coming out, they are helping each other to come out. Yeah, we have to remember that this, all of this is real snow. The special effects team was bringing from the mountain and uh, you can see the skin against the, the snow. It's, it's tremendous. They were really cold. And you can see the amount of effort that the actors did of panic. 
the way they emerge from the dark to crossing this layer of snow. Anytime you're working on a film, you want to make sure that the music you write is telling the correct story. Uh, it just so happened that this time we were working on something that was rooted in real life, rooted in truth, rooted in an event that happened to actual people. So I was constantly thinking about the people whose lives were tragically altered that, that one day in the Andes. I just wanted to be with them, hold space for them as I was writing throughout the entire process. I really want to talk about the makeup is extraordinary. Yeah, that, that is one thing that I wanted to say, you know, about the makeup team, because all work, obviously, it shows a lot, because, you know, I'm seeing all these faces in such a close-up. It was really difficult for the makeup uh, team to work with this, this makeup, because obviously, you know, Pedro was doing this kind of photography that you don't really know what you are doing until you don't see it there. And then you want to retouch, but you cannot get into there to retouch the makeup, but still it looks like amazing. I mean, all the layers of the makeup, you know, that's telling the story of the faces because you can see them, you know, going from the day one to 72. Because you can tell by the, how the skin is burnt by the sun. You can start to see how they are losing weight, gradually see how they are losing the meat on their faces. Especially now, the textures on the faces are incredible. So I had this idea of this moment when they come out to the surface, it's the mountain giving birth to the society. Because it's right after this moment that the, the society of the snow exists. It's, it's the moment that the, the society is created.